Hello traders, today's video we're going to be talking about automated market makers and how we can exploit them for arbitrage. Let's dive in. Alright traders, I promise you don't be intimidated by the, uh, the the words and also, you know, just this how much text there is here because um, it's going to be hopefully simpler than it looks. Hopefully. So an automated market maker is a system that is used. There are two forms of uh, ways in which transfers can happen in DeFi. I mean, th there's a lot more, but these are really the two main ways. One is a uh, decentralized exchange platform with an order book. This is gonna be somewhat similar to a sec to a CEX. Um, <laughs> I'm like five years old again. Um, to a centralized exchange. Um, where trades occur between peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, so between user wallets in a DEX, in a uh, decentralized exchange. So what this means is that I have BUSD, I wanna go buy BNB. I go to a DEX, I give them 250 BUSD, they give me one BNB, done, peer-to-peer. -peer. But there's also platforms that use an AMM, an automated market maker. This is where trades are occurring between you, the user, and a smart contract. So this actually doesn't even mean that this is a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. This is a peer-to-contract uh, transaction. So no, no middleman, no exchange, and that's what makes it pretty cool. So ways that AMMs work is they're entirely based on the supply of the tokens, and supply of tokens determine the price of said tokens within the liquidity pool. And the way in which this, this system operates is through amount of token one, times amount of token two is equal to a said constant. So what this means is that if we raise the amount of token one, lower the amount of token two, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen is if we raise the amount of token one, this is going to get cheaper. And if we uh, depress or lower the amount of uh, token two, it's going to get um, more expensive because there's less of it. And it's this exact supply demand, supply price relationship that dictates how AMMs work. So what's a liquidity pool? Because liquidity pools are where, are where these AMMs uh, uh, occur or, or govern, or I shouldn't say govern. Uh, AMMs run on liquidity pools and a liquidity pool can occur between two, uh, two or more tokens. So let's say that I have one BNB and I have one BUSD and I'm on Pancake uh, Finance on Binance Smart Chain. And I create a liquidity pool, a liquidity token where I pull together one BNB at a fixed price of uh, at a price of 250 BUSD, and then I provide that as liquidity. Well, what I'm doing is I'm allowing others to buy and sell BUSD or buy and sell BNB um, because I'm providing liquidity. And as a benefit, I actually receive a portion of fees. So let me give you guys a quick example of how liquidity providing works and the fee structure and, and how that works as well. So let's say that I, I supply one BNB and 250 BUSD into an LP that is 10 BNB and 2500 BUSD uh, and it's that size after I, after I add my liquidity. I am entitled to 10% of the liquidity in this pool. I am not entitled to one BNB and 250 BUSD. That might seem a little bit weird, but I'm gonna walk you guys through really how this works. But remember, the when you add two tokens and pull them together, you do not have control over those tokens anymore. They will, they can, and they definitely almost always will fluctuate in value. And those fluctuations of value are gonna give you uh, a predetermined supply back when you choose to remove that liquidity. Okay, so this is all you know. good. We, we know that adding liquidity is pretty easy. We just pull together two tokens that we add in this liquidity pool, and we get you know here 10% of the fees. And if the fees are, let's say, you know, seven thousand dollars a day, uh, then I make seven hundred bucks a day in this liquidity pool. Awesome, right? And removing liquidity is just if I want to uh, take out um, my share of the pool, so my ten percent of the pool. Where here it would be one BNB and two hundred and fifty BUSD, but in the future, probably won't be. Now, where things get not so awesome, where things get a little bit muddier, are swaps. This is really the purpose of the video today: swapping. So swaps. Um, can have anywhere from no effect or a very, very slight effect to a massive effect on a liquidity pool. And this is where arbitrage comes in. Let's go through an example. So imagine that we have a new trader. We have Joe who doesn't really know what he's doing or he 
I, I don't know. He just does something kind of silly. And what he does is he looks at our liquidity pool of 10 BNB, 2,500 BUSD, where again, I own 10% of liquidity and I am entitled to 10% of fees. Um, he swaps in 500 BUSD for 2 BNB. Now you might be thinking, wait, wait a second. I thought traders could only add or remove liquidity from the LP. They can do that, but they can also swap individual token for, for another. So if I look at this pool of 2,500 BUSD and 10 BNB, and I myself hold 500 BUSD, I can go to this liquidity pool, give the liquidity pool, the smart contract, 500 BUSD, and it will give me an amount of BNB back. And that's how the liquidity pool, liquidity pool operates. Now, if this guy, Mr. Joe, when he swaps 500 BUSD for 2 BNB, what is he doing to the supply? Well, what he just did is now there is, there is 8 BNB, there's 8 BNB and 3,000 BUSD in this new liquidity pool. Why? Well, because he added, by swapping, he added 500 BUSD and he took away 2 BNB from the liquidity pool. It's his now. So because of that, it's now 8 BNB per 3,000 BUSD. So what's the new price of BNB? Now the new price of BNB in this pool is 375 BUSD. How did I get that price? That's just uh, this divided by this. 3,000 divided by eight is 375. Um, so <laughs> I, I wrote the answer here. But what I was, what I was gonna ask you guys is, let's say that you are an outside watcher of, the, of this liquidity pool in this AMM, and you see, oh my gosh, what just happened? Okay, uh, a trader, let's say you have 20 seconds to make this decision. A trader just swapped 500 BUSD for two BNB. Now this is the new uh, relationship. And let's, let's imagine that the price on centralized and other decentralized exchanges is still 1 BNB 250 BUSD. What would we want to do to take advantage of the new BNB price in the pool being 375 BUSD? What do we want to do? Well, we would want to swap BNB for BUSD, meaning we want to give this smart contract BUSD because we get 375 BUSD back. We want to give this contract um, uh, BUSD, because then we get BNB worth, uh, I, I did not say right. We want to give this con this smart contract one BNB, and when we give this smart contract one BNB, we get back 375 BUSD. Finally got it right that time. Now, what would it look like if we were to do a full arbitrage of this automated market maker? Here's what it would look like. It would be a pretty simple process. Let's say that we are watching, we're out, we are outside this LP in this example. Uh, we don't own any portion of liquidity. We, we haven't touched it yet, right? Plus, let's say we only own BUSD. What you should do is rapidly uh, swap BUSD, the, the BUSD you have right now, um, for BNB, uh, for BNB on a DEX or or a centralized exchange. Probably you'd want to use a DEX though, or different protocol. So. You, what you'd want to do is you would want to rapidly change that BUSD for BNB, probably just using like uh, one inch finance um, or pancake swap, you know, using one of those main platforms that will give you a pretty fair price. So let's say you do that. You have just swapped on a different protocol. Remember, this is different than, than uh, this protocol here. Let's say on that different protocol, let's say on pancake swap finance, you just swap 250 BUSD that you own for one BNB. You now go to this liquidity pool right here where for some reason the supply uh, relationship is now such that one BNB is worth 375 BUSD. You would now want to take your one BNB and swap it for 375 BUSD in the uh, LP above. And then it, th this fifth option is uh, optional, but uh, swap back your, um, uh, yeah, you don't have to. I, I won't even say the one. I was going to say you could swap it back to uh, BNB, but no, to, to keep repeating the process. But I, I don't know if the arbitrage would still stay. If the arbitrage did still stay, then of course you just keep repeating. You go back to the, ex the other protocol, the other platform, you would swap the 375 BUSD you know, for more BNB, go back to this liquidity pool, swap your, your BNB for, for this elevated price in BUSD and keep, keep rinse repeating. And that's the arbitrage. So this is where arbitrage comes into play with automated market makers. 
So as you can probably tell, uh, the way in which we can take advantage of arbitrage is whenever a very large swap occurs that has a very large price impact. What that means is that let's say that you know current liquidity in this pool is 4.1 4.1 mil. If someone takes a swap worth, um, if some th th these are tiny, but if someone like let's say took a one million dollar swap, swapped let's say one million dollars worth of BUSD for BNB, what's going to happen to the prices of BNB and BUSD in the LP? What do you what do you think? I'm, I'm going to repeat this example again. Some guy takes one million BUSD, swaps all that he can for B for BNB in this liquidity pool taking one quarter of all liquidity away. What do you want to do to take advantage of this immediately after? I'll give you guys uh, 10 seconds. Okay, so, oh, wasn't 10 seconds yet, but um, essentially what just happened is if that does happen, 1 million BUSD has been added to the liquidity pool and a bunch of BNB has just been taken away from the liquidity pool. And because of that, uh, because a bunch of BNB has just been taken away from the liquidity pool, what's going to end up happening is the price of BNB is going to skyrocket. Um, it's going to it's going to get quite 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 high, kind of like in the example before, when someone um, swapped 500 BUSD for two BNB. But if someone swapped you know uh, one mil BUSD for a, for a bunch of BNB, there will not be much supply left of BNB. Uh, relative to, to previous supply. And because of that, the price of BNB is going to just skyrocket. And to make money, all you'd have to really do is try to sell as much BNB as you can by buying BNB on a different platform, uh, swapping BNB on this exact liquidity pool for BUSD, and then repeat the process and, and you're gonna make an arbitrage profit. And that is really the basics of automated market maker arbitrage, okay? taking advantage of large swaps or just mispriced pools, mispriced uh, liquidity pools. Now, I wanna get back to what I said I was going to get back to earlier, which is being a liquidity provider and, and what that does to how much money you make or, or, or lose. So let, let, let's put ourselves back in the shoes of this guy here who owns 10% of this liquidity pool because he started off by supplying one BNB, by pooling one BNB with 250 BUSD and then adding that pooled token to this you know liquidity pool He's in. What happens now? Well, what happens now is this new liquidity pool, it's not 10 BNB and 2,500 BUSD anymore. It's 8 BNB and 3,000 BUSD. Now we own 10% of the liquidity in this pool. How is that divvied up? Well, the way that that's divvied up is we would get 10% of this, 10% of this, and we'd also make uh, money on the fees. Make money on any fees that occurred, you know, these, this part. Any fees that, any fees that were uh, incurred during our holding of the LP token in this liquidity pool. So what we would actually get back is we would get 0.8 BNB and we would get back uh, 300 BUSD. So we, we would be left with 0.8 BNB and we'd be left with um, 3,000 BUSD. Even though we started with 1 BNB and 250 BUSD. So that is really something you have to be very, very careful of and it's called impermanent loss, IL. Now IL means that really when one token drastically moves against the other, it's going to change the supply of both tokens. And when that does happen, if you try to remove both tokens, you're gonna get a very different amount of those tokens than what you started with. And um, it can sometimes be in your favor, but I'd say typically it isn't. But the big draw to why would we wanna be a liquidity provider why do you want to be a liquidity provider is because you make really good fees. You know, if you own half the liquidity in this market, you're making about $3,500 a day. You know, if you own two mil worth of, liqu of liquidity here, you're making, uh, you know, like uh, 33.5 a day, right? Now you might say, well, why not just look for a stable coin liquidity pool where there's not much IL risk? You know, the issue with that though is that the, the fee income isn't really that big. You might say, isn't it really safe to provide liquidity for something like BUSD? Um, I'm trying to get BUSD, USDC. It's not really cooperating. Come on, come on. Oh, there you are. I'm just gonna do this the old fashioned way. I'll click you. BUSD, 
and we can we can see swaps for all uh, all kinds of USD. Any large ones? Come on, no. two point seven. Come on. All right, so let's go look at a stablecoin pool. Yeah, perfect. Tether to Binance pegged uh, BUSD. Now you'll see here. Oh, this is actually. I take back what I said. This is actually pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't say pretty good, but basically this was about nine hundred thirty dollars worth of of fees. And let's say if we if we own ten percent of liquidity here, which is eighty seven thousand dollars, we would have made about a hundred bucks on that eighty seven k, which isn't great. But the advantage of why people like stablecoin liquidity pools is because you just continue to earn the fees, and there's not much impermanent loss risk because both of these are pegged to one dollar. So that means that the value just kind of feels like goes like this, you know. But the issue is like, I mean, making a hundred bucks on an 87k position, even on low risk, that's not great. That's not that good. There's plenty of platforms where you can do way better than that on similar levels or even lower risk. Um, but you can take full advantage of a stablecoin liquidity pool using the method I showed you today. You know, if someone does a large swap, let's say, and just uh, puts in. $200,000 worth of BUSD and takes out as much um, USDT as possible, well then with that increase in the BUSD supply, that's going to decrease the price of BUSD in the pool and I'm going to want to buy a lot of that BUSD until it goes back to parity. Let's see if there were any large swaps, really nothing big. Yeah, th these are nothing like that big. The way I look to look at what is a large transaction is percent of liquidity, of course. So this percent of liquidity is 0.1 by my math. Wait, yeah, I think it's about 0.1. So this is only 0.1% of the total liquidity. It's not that much. Uh, you know, if, if something's over like, I'd say two or 3% of total liquidity, it's, it's gonna have a pretty big effect on the uh, liquidity pool and thus arbitrage can take place. Arbitrage on AMMs is risky, but I think that it's probably going to be more profitable than yield farming in the long run. So this is definitely something to look out for. Again, every uh, there are different kinds of systems of automated market makers. This is the most basic, and I'd say probably the most common. Um, but of course, different protocols use you know different firms of AM versions of AMMs. Additionally, bots are dominating this space, but there is still opportunity for us you know, non-bot guys to um, take full advantage of this. Because any large swap that occurs will disrupt the supply of both tokens in the liquidity pool. And when that occurs, you know, by basically swapping for the token that just increased in supply and selling it at a greater price, that's where we can make some, some good money. So with that, that's going to be it. Uh, oh, the final thing I want to show you guys, this is just optional, but there's also ways you can track all trades in a liquidity pool, and it's through using BSC scan. You know, if I just refresh the page, um, you just get this by just, uh, you get the address from a liquidity pool, and you just paste that address into BSC scan, and it does a really good job of kind of just showing you all the trades that are happening. And so far, there's been at least 800,000 uh, transactions on this liquidity pool, so it's very active. And then you can also see the price of uh, BNB. And you can say, hey, the price of BNB is 256. You know, what is the price of BNB if I was to get it uh, through this liquidity pool? If it's higher, then I probably wanna buy um, BNB elsewhere and then sell it here. If it's lower, I probably wanna buy BNB here and uh, you know, buy BNB here using BUSD. So here it says price is 256.48, whereas, yeah, so it's basically the same. That's gonna do it for this video. Arbitrage is wonderful. Arbitrage can be really, really fun. Uh, definitely a really cool way to take advantage of DeFi is automated market maker, you know, arbitrage as I've shown you guys today. This is gonna be pretty, I think, confusing and taxing for maybe some newer people. Um, but I will be linking a, a, a link in the description below that will hopefully help um, explain it. With that, happy trading and start arbing.